You know, I like, I thank God because, you know, everything that is, we have to do this year, the Lord has already downloaded. Amen. So, every theme for every worship experience this year. Because this year, and I think next year, I don't know about next year, but this year, every theme he has given me for every Sunday and every worship experience that he has given me this year is tied to the harvest. Amen. Everything we are doing, we are pulling and pushing towards the harvest. Remember, our target for the harvest is pressed down, shaken together, and that is our target. Amen. Our target to go harvest, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. That is our target for the harvest. So all that which we are doing this year is in line with that. Because we have to enter into that place where Christ set for us. The place of rest. Amen. Hallelujah. Where things, we enter into what Christ has already accomplished. Amen. And we remove the lie of the devil that God has not done it yet. Amen. But we can freely walk in it. Freely we have received. God is good. The Bible has said that freely you have received. Now, let me find Christ enough. Uh, Christ is enough. My oath and the finish of my faith. This theme I said will last for a while. God is good. It has very many facets. So, to hang hang up. To find your name. Hang hang up. The oath and the finisher of my faith. This is a very straightforward sermon. God willing. We go to Genesis 12, 1 to 7. God is good. Let me ask a question. A very simple question. Why do people who are scholars want to write books? Why do scholars like to write books? Huh? To show off. <laughs> Olga, I still don't trust you. <laughs> You're not helping your trust. <laughs> Why do they push to publish books? Four marks. Okay, five. They can part. They can do a DVD. They can do a DVD also. Are they? Olive Nakfukuza. Can you learn to wrap? Huh? Hmm. We figure it, but we figure it out. Huh? Two. Uh-huh. It's a museum. Mm -hmm. we, are, we, are, we are almost trying to get there. We are trying. Eh? Why do they push to publish books? Yana Mujui. You don't know why they push to write books. Why would someone write to write a book about a subject matter? To be an authority in that field. You have redeemed yourself. Yes. To be an authority. The word author, the word authority comes from the word author. When you offer, you become an authority. God is good. You become an authority. And that is why once someone does a book, someone else will quote that book. Another person will quote those two books. Amen. If you are going, if you, if you are going to defend whatever, your masters, your thesis, or anything, you always try to quote someone who wrote something somewhere. Because the moment they write something, they become an authority in that field. No matter what it is. There was a time I was buying a book. Let me tell you a funny story. I was buying a book. When I was buying this book, the book was about what? 
these books on deliverance or something. So I was buying the book on Amazon. So I see this book about um, 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 something about altars or something. So I'm like, oh, this looks interesting. Let me buy it and read it. So when I'm about to buy the book, I start feeling cold. I'm wondering, why am I feeling cold before I buy the book? It's a very fairly hot day. Okay. So I think, before I buy the book, let me download a sample. So I download a sample. Then I feel very cold. Then I thought, I wasn't feeling cold before this book. What is this book about? So I, before I opened the book, I scrolled the back of the book. Then I saw the, uh, the altar, the authority behind it. I saw this young lady with black hair and black lipstick and black everything. And there it says that she's one of the leading satanists in the world. And this book is a, is a, is a passion project. I understood why I was feeling cold. Delete. God is good. <laughs> because the truth is that whatever being whatever she wrote as a devotion or a satanist, whatever she wrote, she was an authority in that field. Whatever she wrote had the power to influence whoever is reading it. True or false? We are a product of what we read. We are a product of what we see. Amen? God is good. Everything we put down has that amount of power. Nearly same happened before that water which doctor would look for. If a doctor can get your handwriting, they're very happy. Your handwriting is the best gift they can get apart from your blood. God is good. Because there's something about writing. There is something about writing that is very, very biblical, very spiritual, and very powerful. Because more often than not, whatever we write flows from our hearts. It's what we believe. It may be heretic, but it's what we believe. Um, if you met me when I was doing high school ministry, I used to preach about music and the power of music and the cults that are found in the music realm. And I teach about how people used to be caught. And I basically had a couple of CDs of a couple of artists who people loved in that time who were initiating people into various things. And I said, one of the ways that witches used to use in the West, if they wanted to bewitch you, they would write a spell using the reflection of a mirror. So if you pick it up, you saw my mandikwa backwards. So you go to a mirror to put it on the mirror that you can read it. When you read it, they covenant you. And there were albums being sold that time. I'm not going to that story. The albums being sold at that time that at the back of the album had writing written backwards. Good morning. The power of that. When you talk about the author and the finisher of our faith, the best can it's supposed to be the right translation is the author and the perfecter of our faith. Right translation. The author and the perfecter of our, of our faith. The one who wrote it. Meaning Christ is the one who wrote it. Christ is the authority of our lives. That is the theme of what we're talking about today. To go together. Good. Genesis 12. Let us begin this wonderful story. Then the Lord told Abraham, leave your country, your relatives, and your father's house, and go to the land that I will show you. Next verse. I will cause you to become the father of a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. And I will make you a blessing to others. Next verse. I will bless those who bless you and I will cast those who curse you. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham departed as the Lord had instructed him and, the, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he left Haran. You remember the story, right? Good. So the Lord gives Abraham an instruction. I want you to come from here and go to a particular place. We are going to walk with Abraham until we get to the theme of the day. Can we walk together with Abraham? Abraham. So a 75-year-old man has been told by God, leave your father and your mother, let us go. Go to a place I'll show you, I'll, I will make you famous. I'm suspecting two things. Number one, he wasn't famous where he was. God is good. God didn't tell him, I'm going to make you famous ag again. He didn't say, I'm going to make you more famous. In a manager where he was, he must have not been famous. Hallelujah. Number two thing we get in this story is, we get an absolute from God. We get an absolute from God. We get the language that God speaks when he gives a promise. The language of God in a promise is an absolute word. God gives a promise, but God never gives you details. God never gives you details. This is how God speaks. God doesn't tell him about Abimelech stealing Sarah. 
God is good. Doesn't tell him about Hagar. Doesn't tell him about that Sarah will die and he'll die, Sarah will die and he'll live longer than Sarah. There is no information. What Abraham has is an absolute. And that's how the promise of God comes. An absolute. God never gives details. We are together. The author and the finisher of my faith. When this information is coming to Abraham, is it news? Is it news? Three marks. Is it news? Mam jealous or young? Ama monogopa could be wrong answer. Dominic have a record by the way and record me pekyang. God is good. You embarrass your whole village. Is it news? To Abraham, is it news? It's news, isn't it? He has not heard it before. He has never heard it before. God doesn't give you a promise of what you've heard before. God promises something you've never heard before. Amen. So the promise comes to the life of Abraham in this time. At 75 years old, he lives, goes with Sarah wherever they're going. They go to Haran. I mean, they, so they leave Haran, they go all the way to Canaan. Now, in this day that now happen, I want to look at a few things. Go back a bit. Again. I will bless. Okay. I will bless those who bless you and cast those who cast you. Abraham has no idea who's going to cast him, who's going to bless him. Does he know? But God has given a word. All the farms of the earth will be blessed through you. The fellow is 75 years old. Amen. God is good. Move forward. Give me verse 5. I need something interesting in verse 5. It's not for the class, but anyway. He took his wife, Sarai. He took his wife, Sarai. So Abraham has been married. There's no one in the village he has a wife. And God is telling him, I'm going to give you families of the earth will be blessed through you. He's coming from a village. He has not seen anything else outside Uz. I mean Ur. Uz ni kwa job, eh? Sindio? Job ni wa Uz. Abraham ni wa Ur. God is good. I think Ur na Uz ni kwa close. Kama South B na South C. God is good. They must have been very close. Now, so, his 75 has nothing. God is saying this. They took, uh, took and took all his wealth, his livestock, and the, all the poor has do and joined his household at Haran. And family, and finally they arrived in Canaan. Let's go to Hebrews. Give me Hebrews 11. Because I want us to look at what God is doing today. Uh -huh, I don't, give me what I said. Good. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to, 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 to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. This is very important. We're talking about the author and the finisher of his faith. Abraham is taking a chance on God. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God told him leave and go. You know, I always think in my head every time I sit up think about Abraham. I always ask myself, how well did Abraham know God? How much does Abraham trust the Lord? Please reason with me for a minute. Because you have been in all this time you've been here. You know what you call the Ur of the Chaldeans. He's been there all through. He has been there all through. One morning after 75 years of your life, the Lord is uprooting you from that place to another place. And Abraham gets up confidently and goes by faith, not knowing where he was going. And I look at the story of this man and I find this is a theme in his life. Take your son and your son to a mountain that I will show you. The guy takes the son and goes. Abraham had an understanding that we are struggling with. Abraham knew who the author of his life was. Hallelujah. Abraham knew the author of his life. Because if I don't know the author of my life, then I begin to ask God, so God, what are the logistics of where I am going? Nimbali aje? Nibebe fair? God is good. You begin to ask God questions. I am trying to think how many of us would take this because let me tell you, more often than not, 
everything, and this is the whole theme of today. Everything that involves your life, know this. God has planned your life, the beginning and the very end of your life. There is no part of your life that is dark to God. Every part of your life is in the Lord's program. Nothing is out of the Lord's program. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And the fight we have with God is trusting him for the tomorrow we don't know. Can I repeat that? Trusting him for the tomorrow I don't know. Because everything in my life is designed for me to look at it from where I am standing with my human understanding. My nature as a human being is to see now. When I abandon myself in faith, I don't see now, I see God. But the, the key thing is here, how many, and I'm saying this myself, I'd have issues. Because there are times God gives you an instruction and you pinch yourself. Lord, stop me. I might be wrong. Hallelujah. But I think the greater the leap, the greater the reward. Hallelujah. The greater the leap, the greater the, the reward. You know, Bangizango Wakati Nilianza Ministry. Eh? I'm trying to remember a day. Over time when we had two ministries that were coming up, I remember. One was somewhere nearby and the other one was Huko, who was captained. Eh? And I remember we were praying about it, asking God where should we go. And the Lord said, go the one of the es escarpment. God is good. And we went to the escarpment. You know, there are things you studied in geography. Until you see them in real life. So, escarpment kuna baridi. There's real winter. Kwa uko. And I remember the journey of going to that place. The chaos. All the chaos. Good morning. All the chaos. We were to get down, street where? Get off, take a matatu. See, you go where? Get off, take another one. you get where? Then you come to a place the matatus end. When the matatus end now, you have to walk. And you have to walk. And you walk, you walk, you walk, you walk. Then you start walking. God is good. Then you realize that you've not walked yet. Then the walk begins officially. God is good. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking how crazy I was trusting, the, 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 how trusting God. And we are walking. And I remember walking, I'll never forget this. The mud was thick. When you matope, you lift your leg like this. Ni matope. Eh? Matope unaenda, unaenda. And remember the shoes I have are on budget. Kiatu ni a budget. God is good. Kiatu ya budget, haitake matope. By the time we are rained on, and the drama that begins immediately is that we are late. We need to get on the stage. We are three men. Oh, yeah, hey, stage, stage. I was always the guy who went first. For some reason, I always went first. I don't know why. So I go first. Hey, you're looking for water. Can I wash my shoes? And I wash my shoes, and lo and behold, one shoe left the soul. Somewhere on the road, Niliacha Sol Moja. So, Nikopale, I'm with one shoe. Unajua umeva kiatu na umekana style. Watu na shanga na wewe. Kakiatu, uji, uji, kiatu so, so laiko. Ingine na soul, ingine haina soul. Nume sema mpale mbalo yusho makifuanda. Praise God! Hallelujah! Le, you're, you're trying to praise and you know, you're you are afraid they look at your shoe. But the stage is high. Of course they're seeing your shoe. You can't hide the shoe. When I want to go to eye level. If your shoe is here, we can see you have no shoe. And the teachers in that school were in absolute contempt, looking at us like we are criminals. Because we had been forced on the school that weekend by the principal. The teachers wanted to revise. So they are seeing who are these young men who have come here, and one of them has half a shoe. And I'm standing there and everything within me is fighting. I'm thinking, what do I say now? I'm looking for a story. I'm looking for a joke. I am stranded. 
Why do I have to go fast? God is good. Hallelujah. It used to be a three-man team. One guy used to know how to sing. He'd start singing. So he began singing a song. And he began singing and we began singing. We began singing whichever way we could sing. And the students picked up the song and we sang, we sang, we sang. When we sang, we sang, we sang. It's where now I told the Lord, listen, I've lost my shoe. I have been rained on. And you told me to come here. Compensate with an, with the, an anointing, please. On the bare minimum, let them see you moving in this place. God is good. The Lord moved. Amen. I came back with that shoe. Don't think it was a miracle that someone blessed me with a shoe. No. I wasn't blessed with a shoe. I came with that shoe in the bag. Hallelujah. God is good. Yes. There's no miracle of a shoe at Yodo, Havana. Thank you. It was powerful. Slippers, Komatatu. Nairobi. God is good. And all that journey, I'm thinking, why did I stop? The career that I had. Lord, why did I leave? Why? Why did I leave, Lord? Why? Why am I here? When you shook a town, you a shuttle, you shook a town, you have real fear to go to your stage. Real genuine fear because you are thinking, you are in slippers with a bag, and I'm atop your escarpment, and you want to, mar- to walk through town, and you might meet people you know. Who knew you as a guy who wore flashy suits? You are thinking you'll see them. I know you know the devil is real because you actually meet them. You meet them that day on a run out of pop. And they look at your shoes first. And they look at your first thing, they look at your slippers. Why do you have slippers in town? Why? What if I need squeeze? I don't do you know. Nowadays I just nini, you know, uh, yeah. we, we do things. God is good. And you move on. And it was weird because God has called me. I know God has called me to ministry. But this thing is not making sense. I remember when my wife was asked by her mother, what does this man who wants to marry you do? And my wife spoke Chinese. But he did law. 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 My mother-in-law said, why didn't you continue doing law? Well, she couldn't understand. She couldn't define what I did. To her friends, in the Hey, yeah. He works hard. He works hard. He leaves the house. Every morning he goes out. Every morning he goes. Somewhere. I don't know where. God is good. <laughs> Could not be defined. But you see, I'm telling I've been called to do what? Even me, I don't see where this thing is going. I don't understand it. God is good. I can understand it. So me, I'm thinking, this 75-year-old man, how does he convince his wife? How? <laughs> I'm thinking, how? Me, I'm thinking, how? It was, it was something else. Because I think, you're laughing at my wife yesterday going home. And she was telling me honestly. She gave me a confession here last night on my way home. She told me, you know, Victor, there are days when we would go out and we would be at the restaurant and we couldn't afford lunch. For me, honestly, me, I could afford lunch. It's just that I thought as the man you should buy lunch. <laughs> God is good. After all these years, the truth came out. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Sawa. Took it with pride. I'm glad you did not pay lunch. I'm glad you didn't buy lunch. <laughs> I was hungry, Lord. I was hungry. Now, yesterday she confessed God is good. After all these years of marriage, when you have nothing to do about it, I'm the ruler. But I'm thinking, how does this man? Go? And the Bible says he went without knowing where he was going. I'm thinking, what does he tell his wife? Which man tells a woman, follow me to a place I don't know? And which woman goes to a place called I don't know? God is good. I'm just asking. Because women, you love to know. Amen. You love to know. Yes, I'm a proud son. Like it's a good thing. <laughs> it's a good thing, isn't it? Okay, good. To the best of your knowledge. Hallelujah. Mike differs. Not me and Dominic. We don't differ. For the sake of peace in our homes. Mike, you differ, isn't it? Take it for all of us. 
<laughs> Take it for us, please. <laughs> I'm thinking he went without knowing where he was going. And the conversation I'm thinking he might have had with, with Sarah. But I'm going to a place. I'm leaving the land we have been all our lives. Sarah is 65 at the time. Abraham is 75. He's telling Sarah, listen, you've been here 65 years. Your entire life have been here for 75 years. This is our inheritance land. Everything is here. Everyone knows it's here. But Sarah, listen, God has told me to go to a place I don't know. And Sarah asks him, which God is this? Because we worship the stars. Which God is this? And he says, it's a God who came to me in a dream. He calls himself Yahweh. So now you have a, now you have a new God. Called Yahweh. Now I'm thinking about that from a marriage point of view. God is good. Sarah Lejaribiwa. Amen. I think when Sarah tells him to sleep with Hagar and Ab Abraham ob obeys, it is fear. To <laughs> take it over. It is absolutely he feared. He feared. He thought, I have made this woman's life difficult. Whatever she wants, I will comply. God is good. But I'm thinking, next verse. Verse 9 says. And even when he reached the land God promised him, he lived there by faith, for he was like a foreigner living in a tent. This is very strong. It means that where they came from, there were no tents. There were houses. God is good. He lived in a tent. And so did Isaac and Jacob, to whom God gave the same promise. They lived in tents. They were foreigners in the land that was theirs. The author and the finisher of our faith. He takes you out of comfort to a place of absolute discomfort. And in his understanding, he knows that in the discomfort is where your breakthrough is. Isn't that remarkable? But where I'm pushing you, you will not be comfortable. But where you're not comfortable is where your breakthrough is. Because the power of God doesn't come in our comfort. The power of God comes in our discomfort. We see the glory of God not when you're comfortable. We see the glory of God when we are uncomfortable. And that is why when God is asking something from you, God never asks you what you're comfortable to give. God always asks you what you're uncomfortable to give. Because in what you're uncomfortable to give, you are telling him, I trust you more than the thing you have given me. Where you're comfortable to give, you're telling God, I am comfortable enough to compete with you toe to toe. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Next verse, give me verse 10. Abraham did this because he was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed by God. Abraham believed that where he was going was the new Jerusalem. He believed where he was going was a place that Christ had established. That's what Abraham believes. He dies having not seen it. The next verse I think says, in verse 11, and it was by faith that Sarah together with him, Abraham was able to have a child even though they were too old and Sarah was barren. Abraham believed that God would keep his promise. What was the promise of God to Abraham? What is the promise of God to Abraham? So Abraham is looking at his life. And Abraham is doing mathematics and thinking, he told me at 75, with a barren wife, that I'll be a father of many nations. All the men in the village began having children when they were 18. God is good. All the men at 18 had children. Me, Abraham. At 75, I have no child. And I ought to be the father of the nations. This is the mistake we do when we compare our destiny with others. When you compare your destiny with others, you are limiting the author of your life. You are limiting what God wants to do with you. Because he wrote your story different from the person next to you. Amen. Amen. Because if you look at this story keenly, you learn something very powerful. That Lot is younger than Abraham. Lot has a wife. And Lot has two grown-up children. Meaning Lot and he's younger than Abraham. It is easy for you to think and say, people my age have built houses. People my age have done this. People my age have done this. And God is saying, don't you know I'm the author and the finisher of your faith. I wrote your story. And in your story, Abraham, I wrote to get a child at 100. I didn't write your story to have a child at 18. 
Amen. And Lot gives birth to children early, but gives birth to a, to a cast race. Abraham gives birth late to the child of the promise. What do you prefer? Are we together? The mistake we make is we look at other people's progress, other people's growth, other people's breakthroughs. You are thinking, we enter the camp at the same time. We are a promoter, we are a promoter, we are a promoter. We are a promoter. And mark timing. And God is saying, no, look unto me the author and the finish of your faith. If you look to me, the promotion is found in me. And my promotion is not like others. I won't give you the same because the promotion I've given you, I've set apart. But it doesn't only bless you, it blesses everyone. God doesn't tell Lord, your children will be blessed throughout the world. He tells Abraham, by your children, the entire world shall be blessed. His delays, according to man, but according to God, he's saying this is a powerful thing. God takes time with great things. Hallelujah. God takes time with great things. If you have a great story, if you have a great destiny, God takes time. Amen. But you will testify and say, I saw exhilaration. One day, I was walking on foot. The next day, God is good. I was inside a Cadillac. I don't know how. Me, I was minding my business. I was on my way to Dikomba. God is good. Then the Lord met me. Hallelujah. Now I'm in Dubai shopping. The great God. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. I'm saying this because there are some of us here who our biggest depression is how fast we want God to move in our lives. Not how great we want God to move in our lives. There's a day I was praying and the Lord asked me, what do you want, Victor? Do you want me to move fast or me to move greatly? I told him, Lord, move greatly. He said, then wait for me. A fast move of God will give you manna for today. A great move of God gives you a land flowing with milk and honey. God is good. God is good. Are you in shock? If you look at Romans 4, 16, 22. This is a powerful statement here. It says, that's why faith is that's why faith is the key. God's promise is given to us a free gift and we are certain to receive it. Please, if you have ever underlined this. God's promise is given to us as a free gift. We don't pay for it. Amen. It is given to us as a free gift. We are certain to receive it whether or not we follow Jewish customs. If we are faithful like Abraham's, for Abraham is the father of all who believe. God is good. Next verse. That is what the scripture says. Meaning that when God told him, I have made you the father of many nations. This happened because Abraham believed the God who brings the dead back to life. Who brings into existence what didn't exist before. God is good. God is good. Who is Abraham believing? The God who promised you. Do you believe he's able to fulfill it? Take time and think about it. That God who promised you a house, that God who promised you a spouse, do you think he's faithful to do it? If you know he's faithful to do it, you have no problem waiting upon the Lord. If you think he's not faithful to do it, then you don't wait upon the Lord. God is good. You know, I wrote something the other day. I saw it on my, on my, on my Facebook page. One of the quotes I like to put. And I was talking about waiting upon the Lord. And this wise person decided to respond. Sent a message on, on my page. And this wise person said, "At you wait on God the way a waiter waits in a restaurant while serving. Why can't he write that on his own page? God is good. God is good. Waiting on God is waiting on God. It's as simple as that. If I'm trusting God is coming through, I'm trusting God is coming through. God doesn't want me to be busy when I'm waiting. Because when I'm waiting, I need to be growing. Amen. And growing in faith involves being still. You don't grow in faith by not being still. 
You grow in faith by knowing how to be still. If you don't know how to be still, you can't grow in faith. God is good. Abraham, the Bible says here, he believed God who brings the dead back into life and who brings into existence what didn't exist before. Give him the next verse. Verse 10 says, when God promised Abraham that he will become the father of many nations, Abraham believed him. God had also said, your descendants will be as numerous as the stars, even though such a promise seemed utterly impossible. Abraham still chose to believe God. Why? Next verse. And Abraham's faith is not weakened, even though he knew he was too old to be a father at that age. Amen. And his wife Sarah as well had never been able to have children. He knew his circumstance. When you call Christ the author and the finisher of your faith, doesn't mean you are not aware of your circumstance. But it means you know that God is aware of my circumstance enough to make the promise he made. God doesn't make a promise for your life independent of your circumstance. He makes the promise bound to your circumstance. God doesn't make a promise in a vacuum. Mungu anajavuta ni promise Miriam kitu fulani the reality in Miriam's life is this. Now Miriam is supposed to say fine I know the reality of my life is I am here. But give me the next verse. 20. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew, grew stronger and stronger in this. He brought glory to God. Abraham looked. The more he aged, the more he leaned on the promise. The more he aged, the more he leaned on the promise. Can I tell you something? When the devil pinches you, what do you do? What do you do? You do what? You pinch him back. I think I've told you a story when you were doing ministry eh? and, and you were doing ministry and uh, this, uh, this gentleman was it's leading songs. Amen? And this girl, when you were singing the girl, the, her position got a bit strange. And she moved where he was very slowly. That's why whenever you are doing, the, we are doing ministry, we don't like closing our eyes. God is good. Things happen in deliverance when your eyes are closed. It's good you keep your eyes open. Hallelujah. So this lady crawled akuja pole pole akauma mjama hapa. Vizuri. And the guy led us in that whole hall to repentance. Ameumwa. Yanasikia huko anasema, "Hiyo ni moto ya Yesu." Moto ya Yesu. Moto. Moto my friend. Unaumwa. And you people are wicked. People are seeing you being wanakuangalia tu. Bora jaga tu. Ake jamaa aliumwa a good one. More Lord, hallelujah. He's calling on the fire of the Holy Spirit. He assumed it was fire. The Holy Spirit. He had men or mutu. God is good. <laughs> you know, I've seen many things in ministry. God is good. I've seen things, hallelujah. One day I said when I'm 75, I'll do a book. At 75, eh? You'll all read it, isn't it? Si mutakuwa wana macho. Na mutakuwa area, isn't it? Good. 75. What I'm saying here is this. Every time God has given Miriam a promise, he's the author and finisher of, of your faith. Meaning he's not unaware of your life. The more the time it takes, the stronger your faith is supposed to be. That's what the Bible is saying here. Our nature is the longer it takes, the weaker we become. But it's supposed to be the longer it takes, the bigger my faith. God is good. Because if I want to jump from here to there and I want to jump well, will I take a step backwards? Isn't it? I'll go farther. I'll go farther to gain the momentum that I need to jump. God is good. But if at all I'm standing here and I want to get there, it is impossible. When I'm leaning on the Lord every day, God gave me a promise. He gave me a word. He said, Victor, I'll do this in your life. I'm holding on to the word. When I'm holding on to the word, I must be aware the enemy will be doing everything he can to make me weaken. Abraham gets the word, first word at 75. Gets second word at 82. Abraham receives the fulfillment of the word at 100. But it's a 25-year gap between the first promise and the manifestation of it. The Bible says his faith grew stronger. 
do we think that God is not aware of our struggle? Do we know that God is aware of our struggle? God is good. God is good. Give me verse 21. He was absolutely convinced that God was able to do anything that he promised. Wacheni wambie. Sazigine nabidi unajiambia. There are times you tell yourself that Father, I know you are faithful. Father, I know you are faithful. Father, I know you are faithful. God told you you will be a lender, not a borrower. And that morning, zile simu zimekuja. Is Father, I know you are faithful. I will lend to nations. That's what you said. I believe you. I believe you. There are moments when unazidi kujiambia, you keep on saying who God is, who God is. The Bible says Abraham was absolutely convinced that God was able to do anything he promised. When God has given you a promise, it is your business to say, I'm, a, I'm ignoring my circumstance and I'm believing that he will do it. I always love saying this. But I don't question if what God will say will come. My issue is normally when, and I've always told some of you, but always pray for the grace of sustenance. But God keeps you alive because God surely do, does come through. God always comes through. Next verse, please. 22. 22 says, And because of Abraham's faith, God declared him to be righteous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is, God is faithful. I met a man in Mombasa a few years ago in the ministry. We were talking about marriage. And the guy told us something very funny. He said that him at the altar, he never said the vows as others say. God is good. He said, I promise to be faithful. I promise to be there for rich or for poor. He said, I, I will try. God is good. Imagine on the altar, your husband telling you, I will try to be faithful. And I looked at him and looked at, at, at the wife. And the guy said, many people in the altar have said they promise and they failed. God is good. God is good. <laughs> I believe he prepared the wife. Amen. I think if you don't prepare your wife, you might be alone. Wedding in the year, Maji. God is good. Photo shooting the corner na 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 kufura. The wedding will be younger, keep on smiling. Just smile, just smile. Just smile. Hallelujah. Smile. Smile, smile. Smile, smile. Smile, smile. God is good. Yes. Next verse. Let's go to Hebrews 11, 16 and 17. We are together. Somewhere. But they were looking for a better place. Uh, yeah, that is why God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared a heavenly city for them. Verse 17. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac. Now we are beginning to get home. Or Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham who had received God's promises was ready to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. God has given the promise. You have seen part manifestation. Then God is testing you on the promise. God has promised you good health. You begin to feel better. Then suddenly you feel worse. Does that make sense? Huh? God promised you financial freedom. You get money a bit then the next thing, the money has to go. When God is setting your life free forever, the thing he's setting you free with is the thing he and the enemy will contend for in your life. Mnanishika, the reason why Abraham is able to do this, who can tell me why? Why do you think Abraham was willing to offer a sacrifice? The only child. Mm. 
Mhm. Mhm. Ndio mama sana. Nikunywa chai asubuhi. Why? She's halfway there but why? This is the call to the author and finisher of the faith. Why? This is village here. Why? Hello villagers. God is good. <laughs> why? Nimepa huko I don't trust Olga. Why? Atoto kumbukiza Mike. So nimeona tu ni ignore Mike. For the sake of Mike. And his quest for bacon. Next. Eh? Uh-huh. Why, why, why? Can you think why? Indulge me, please. In Bible class. Amen. To jump with scripture. Mm-hmm. 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 Eva may I'm if sixty percent. Nash be like Eva out next week. Valentine's. Okay. A senior bishop, I commission. Take your wife out. Nash. 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 On a job Monday, Dakwana way up. Big amount will be here on Monday. She will not be here. Me and you here on Monday. <laughs> Judas, Judas, Judas. <laughs> Let us, this is the Bible class. You focus on the word of God. Remember, we focus on the word of God. <laughs> Why not you're saying something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, 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 mm-hmm. but God said, This is the child of the promise. Happy? There's no nation. If the son dies, there's no nation. There's an answer here. Look at the moment here. He'd have faith that God raised Isaac back from the dead. That is what Abraham has. Abraham thinks, my body was dead and he gave me a son. If this son dies, he can raise him back from the dead again. In fact, the Bible says it itself. God is good. Think in Romans uh, 4. God is good. I give verse 18. I think it's here. Maybe it's here. I don't know. Maybe 18. Yes, there it is. Abraham assumed that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. Now, in a sense, is what Maina you are saying now. But when he offers up Isaac as a sacrifice in his heart, he has already released his son. He has already gone to the place, my son is already dead. So when God says don't kill the child, truthfully speaking, he gets back his son back from the dead. Because in his heart he had let him go. But Abraham is willing because Abraham is my sabu. I was already dead. My body was dead. I was impotent. My wife was barren. God gave us a child. If God can make the womb of my wife carry a child, God can change my impotence to be able to get a child. Then if this child dies, God can bring this child back to life. If you reflect on that for a minute, you understand what faith in God looks like. That is why Tashimanga, if God brought me this far, then he can sustain me here. 
if God kept me this long, then he can move me here. It is always from a place of reference. Lunazamanga, kama hawaku niyuwa last year, they can't kill me now. Mnanishika. So Abraham is assuming that, the Bible says he's assuming that, okay, fine, I'll offer you massacre, but I know you work out something because this is the guy that you said. The author and the finisher of my faith. The author and the finisher of my faith. Abraham thinks it is imperfect. But God can perfect it. John 8, 55 and 58 says this. Jesus tells his disciples this, that before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. What does that mean? Before Abraham was, Jesus says, I am, John 8. What does it mean before Abraham was, I am? He was there from the beginning, right? Now, if Jesus is there from the beginning, please walk with me. Fungwa Colossians 1.15. Walk with me now. We are coming home. To me build places. He says, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before God, made anything at all and supreme over all creation. Next verse. Christ is the one through whom God made everything in heaven and earth. He made the things we can see and the things we cannot see. Kings and kingdoms, rulers and authorities, everything has been created through him and for him. Everything was made through Christ. Nothing existed out of him, without him. Everything, angels came out of him. God is good. Angels came out of him. Lucifer, the chief angel, came out of Jesus. Manishika Abu. Angels know what everything means. Even the fallen demons came through him. Everything came through him. It was made through him and for him. Next verse. He existed before everything else began and he holds all creation together. The Bible says he has preeminence over everything. So, there is a man called Abraham. This man called Abraham is born to a father called Terah. Abraham is 75 years old. We're going back there. Wakes up in the morning. God tells him, go to a land I will show you. Abraham gets up. Let us assume for the sake of discussion, be Mike Kuja, when Abraham, when Father Abraham, father of nations, hallelujah. God is good. I prophesy many, many, many children. Amen. Hallelujah. God is great. Father of nations. Amen. So I mean, yeah, yeah, so you work, my uncle, my yes, very good for Abraham. Hallelujah, father of many nations. God is good. <laughs> no, he's trying to question how much power he has in that conversation. <laughs> I think he's learning very fast. God is good. Yes, just one moment, that's a manga. I want six children. Unangaliwanga. Another producer. Five. Four. Four. Three. Oh, two. Hi, I want two. I want two. God is good. Now, this is Father Abraham. Father Abraham, born out of terror. Abraham, he's sleeping one morning. The Lord comes and tells him, Listen, Abraham, take your family, go to a land I will show you. The land I will show you is there. Okay? Okay, let's see if he's here. In the middle here. And I'll make you a father of nations. So, Abraham, move here. When Abraham moves here, he gets a promise, I'll give you a son. You'll call him Isaac, blah, blah, blah. Everything comes, the son of the promise. I, he, give, he, gets, he gets Isaac. When Abraham gets Isaac, through Sarah at 100 years, God tells the guy, listen, by the way, give me that boy as a sacrifice. Ah. Abraham moves here. What's wrong up, Abraham? Asante, Abraham. He picks up Isaac. God is good. <laughs> no. <laughs> so Abraham is here. Abraham Akifika Hapa, eh? they call him a father of nations, gives birth to Isaac. Isaac gives birth to Jacob and Esau. Abraham lives to see Esau and Isaac, Esau and Jacob until they are 15 years. In the process, Sarah dies. Right? Sarah dies. Abraham marries Keturah. And Abraham suddenly has no more impotence. 
God is good. Nimesoma tu Bible. Ni Bible nimesoma. Haki ni Bible nimesoma tu. Ni, ni Sara alisema alikuwa important, alafu aka, aka nini, alafu wakaweza kunini. Lakini akipata ketura, there was no reference. He was healed permanently. Umenishikanisha. Umenangana machiza uo yes sana ni kama nimeingilia Abraham. Now. So how much do they get like seven children with ketura? God tells Abraham you can't bless them, send them away. Isaac is the one who bless. God blesses um, Abraham and uh, Isaac is blessed and Jacob is blessed and Israel begins. Abraham continues all the way. We assume it's Abraham's lineage through Isaac and Jacob and Israel. They proceed until here Jesus appears. Seed of Abraham, right? Amifika. Now, Jesus is talking and the disciples are telling him, he's telling them, listen, not telling me about Abraham. I was here before Abraham. Before Abraham was, I am. Fast forward, go back. Give me your son, your only son. How can I have a son yet my wife is barren? Leave the land of the Chaldeans and go to a, to a land I'll show you. Christ is saying at the end, tell me Mike too, that before Abraham was, I am. They tell him, you're, only, you're not even 50 years old. What do you mean? Before Abraham was 50 years, I mean, you're 50 years. How do you know this? They even, in fact, want to stone him. What is Christ saying? Christ is saying, Abraham Rudy. Abraham made a back and forth. Eh? Jesus is saying, listen, before Abraham was, I am. Eh? I am. Everything was made for me. So Christ is saying, listen, I'm the guy who came. From, I went to Adam, nikatoa Adam, nikakuja hivi, tukafika kwa Eber, tukakuja, tukakuja, mbaka tera. Jesus is saying, listen, in the life of Abraham, I was there before. I knew I'll call him at 75. I knew I will give him a promise at 82. I knew I'll give him a son at 100. I knew I will try him at like 120. I knew he'll live for 15 years. All that I know. Because before Abraham was, I am. Abraham is experiencing life on a daily basis. Christ is saying, I already finished this story a long time ago. So, Anawaguliza, you're telling me about Abraham. I'm the guy who put Abraham in position. None of you did. Do you hear Matusi in a very polite way? You know that? Because he's telling people, you're telling me about a guy that I planned. Every step Abraham was taking was within my plan. I am the one who wrote this story. I am the author and the finisher of the life of Abraham. It is me who chose him. He never chose me. It is me who called him. He never called me. I am the one who decided. He'll have a son. It is me who decided. Abraham never decided. It is me who provided the ram on that mountain. Abraham never had a ram. It is me who made Rebecca pregnant with two children. Esau and Jacob, it is I. It is I who preserved you until you could see the promise with your eyes. God is good. God is saying, so Christ is telling them, listen, before this guy was, because everything was made for me. Abraham was made for me. Because out of Abraham came Israel. Out of Israel came Judah. Out of Judah came David. Out of David came Joseph. Out of Joseph came me. They were all made for me. Mananishikanisha. So in your life, I said, don't fall for the Abraham. In your life, Christ is saying, I am the author and the finisher of your life. Every step you are walking, I am well aware. To you it is news. To me it is not news. You are surprised. Ah, uh me -huh. I knew that at 35, you will be in a road accident. And I will protect you. I knew you'd lose a child. I was there. I had planned it. I knew you'd lose a job. I knew you'd be divorced. I knew it. Nilijua. Nilijua where your family, nilijua kuna wachawi. I would know they were 38. I learned that eight of them in the family. I'm the one who learned them. I know. I know what your father did. I know what your mother did. I am in control. I am aware. I'm the author and the finisher of your faith. Everything was made for him. But I may exist before everything else. That's what he says. And I hold everything together. 
He says, if it's away from me, it breaks. If it comes close to me, it comes alive. Good morning. Good morning. That is why parenting is the most unique thing God made. Those of you who are parents, you know this. Parenting is the most weird thing God made. Because even you are a child of someone. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you can do things. I'm the only evangelist out of my mother's children. The stammerer that God gave her is the evangelist. Parenting is weird, right? Very strange. The one she thought would preach is not preaching. Hallelujah. It is weird because we are understanding something. That he holds everything together. It is him who is in control. Are we talking please, ladies and gentlemen? Can you give me I want to bring this home. Can I bring this home now? The Lord I want to teach, but I think I'll teach on another day. Give me Isaiah 46, 9 to 10. Don't forget the things I've done throughout history. For I am God alone, I am God, and there is no other, there's no one else like me. Next verse. Only I can tell you what is going to happen even before it happens. Everything I plan will come to pass, for I do whatever I wish. God is good. Give me Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. I want to leave that at this. I'll teach the other part of it maybe tomorrow. Because the other definition of faith is a very interesting and, and a very, I have a lot of scriptures in it anyway. I think I've given many scriptures today to an olive to key in. Now, let me just try to summarize it. God is saying, in fact, that verse is interesting because the other verse is saying that I'm the Lord Almighty who speaks the end from the beginning. Whatever I say shall come to pass. One of the most important fundamental parts of your salvation is to know your life will never, shall never, can never surprise God. If you remember that your life is past tense to God, you'll have more peace of mind. That every crisis I walk into is something that God already saw and God already knew. Amen. Every issue I encounter is something that God saw, God knows. There is nothing God does not know. There is nothing hidden beyond him. Hebrews says, nothing is hidden away from you, Lord. Nothing stays in darkness. Everyone that involves the life of Alex, God is in full control because he says, I'm the author and the finisher of your age. Behold, I have plans for you. I know the plans I have for you. And then say, we know the plans. Salvation becomes difficult when I begin to wrestle with God, assuming that God in my life is in a place where he's also learning as I'm learning. God is good. You know how you say in a, in a marriage we are growing together? Or we are learning together? Hallelujah. We are learning together. Our relationship with God is different. We are learning about him. He already knows about us. The relationship is like this. It is down. It is up down. He knows what we need. He knows who we are. Hebrews 12, 1 says this. Therefore, since you're surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses, if you read Hebrews 11, the whole of it, you'll understand what it's saying. Let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily hinders our progress. Let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. Next verse, I'll finish with this. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, to whom our faith depends from start to finish. God is good. Give me King James. The secret to Abraham was keeping his eyes on Jesus. When you keep your eyes on Jesus, you are guaranteed perfection. Unangalia nani? Yesu. Unangalia Yesu. Wale muna kumbuka zile story mwile ambiwa about uh, pass out the Ascari. You remember those stories? Huh? My father used to be 
Um, this is a lot of, of things. In it. When NYS began, my dad was one of the guys who began that program. And one of my brothers went to NYS when NYS was NYS. And my brother was telling me that in NYS, when they are on the parade, the parades would last almost five, six hours. Five, six hours parade. Mumesi mama upright. Hivi. Anything you are told to do, you do. No matter that the whole day, maybe at night, they rain. While it can be as you wapi, viatu, you go wet, nini. But in the morning, your shoes must be shining. I can remember the parade was death. Because they used to, ski, they used to clean out the weak ones at the parade. No matter that, you stand at the parade and you look forward. You look like this. And it's like the commanders would come and talk to you from here. You can turn and look at him like this. Unangalia hivi. Anaongea unangalia tumbele. And no matter that things would happen you've never thought of. There are those who drank too much too. Do I need to say more? Nyachi abu, sindio? Yes. Kana kumwania? Na umesi mama tu? Maija, nikubai. God is good. <laughs> and I don't know how many of you heard the stories that in case an insect entered your trouser. Hallelujah. I don't know why insects always go to one area when they enter your trouser. I don't know why. It's a mystery. I can't get to go to the in a whole journey. You know, my great through in darkness. And I drop all in the end. You don't go to the end. You can't scream. You can't make a sound. You can't make a sound. But if you made a sound, you will be dismissed. So your whole life depends on it. And an ant standing between you and destiny. The devil is a liar. God is good. <laughs> God is good. That's why the What is happening beneath you? God knows. God knows. And I thought this, I was right, I thought this, I thought, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, that Jesus has promised me something. And I'm looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. And it is hurting me. There are many scriptures I wanted to share with you today. God willing, I teach them on Sunday or next week. I had prepared many scriptures just to bring this home. Because at times things are happening around you. It is burning around you. Your children are burning. Your finances are burning. Your health is burning. Everything is burning. And the only thing you have is a promise from God. There are some trials in your life anointing cannot break. There are trials in your life anointing cannot break. There are trials in your trials in your life anointing cannot break. Me, I have seen times when I have worshipped the Lord, when I've been the presence of God, and the power of God was so tangible to me. But the trial remained. Because the trial was, Lord, I'm looking. Na kazana kisoja. Na unachunwa unangalia tumbele. Unangalia mbele. Unakataa kusema ni kubaya. Unangalia hivi. Someone called to them, praise God. How I am blessed. Lakini kenyo napitia. Only you and God knows. We are together. There are trials in your life. The anointing cannot deal with. It is your focus on the author and the finisher of your faith that brings you home. But Lord, I will stay and I will keep my eyes locked on Jesus. There is a song by Bethel, I think. I love a verse. This lady says, you're my anchor through the wheel and the storm. Huh? And she goes on to say, you know, with her eyes locked on Jesus. And I love those words. With my eyes locked on him. Because I have to keep my eyes on him. Because God has given me a word. But I don't want to look at his lips. 
I want to look at his eyes. Because if I look at his eyes, I keep focused. Amen. I don't lose focus. When I was in, uh, I just finished high school, one of my friends went to visit his girlfriend, Uku Kiambu. God is good. And he went to visit his girlfriend in, in Kiambu. And it was those days when you'd plan a date using landlines. So they plan a date. And she tells him, on Saturday, my parents are not there. You can come over. The guy goes. But on Saturday morning, this girl and her parents said that they're going somewhere. So they leave in the morning. They go. So he hasn't been told because he has no phone. So he enters the compound knowing that the girlfriend is there. He goes to the door. He's very quiet. The distance from the gate, from the house, the gate is a bit far. Jama akafika, akafinya kengele. Waiting for the girlfriend to open. While he waits there, the next thing he hears is, and the guy turns behind, I don't know, four Dobermans. And the guy turned and looked at them. They were well-trained dogs. They don't bark. They are self-confident. self-esteem don't bark. Wow, it's low self-esteem. Dogs with high self-esteem don't bark. And my friend stood there from 11. Alisimama upright. Akaziangalia. And the moment he tried to sit, the instructions are clear. Remain standing, young man. The guy stood. Akaziangalia hivi kwa macho. Umbo zikalala. Zikalala, zikamuangalia na zikalala. Akifanya step. Anasimama tu. Akasimama hapo. His greatest nightmare was the girl's father to find him there. God is good. Oh, was he found? Because the dogs kept him company. And I'm a bit like Mama Apo, Lizikoyole Apo, Singana Mahali, I stood there. When that girl came with her family, it was clear the relationship cannot work. I had made up my mind. It was not worth my time. You know, like she got about the Kijano on a fine in Yapa, someone went after Kwanjoroge. Yapa. I'm the Abbas Kwanjoroge, all his hour and Amanda. If I tried anything, those dogs would have told me to pieces. God is good. <laughs> you keep your eyes locked on Jesus. The offer and the future of your faith. He gave you a word, but you look into his eyes. Hallelujah. He gave you a word, but you look into his eyes. Because we all know the sincerity is always in the eyes, right? Lord, I'm looking at you. It is burning. My marriage is burning. But Lord, I have a word from you. And man shall not live by bread alone. But the word that comes from you, mina kuangalia. Uku una gongwa, una chunwa, una vurugwa, mina kuangalia tu. Mrs. Ongi. Ah, mina kuangalia. I'm not going to, I'll just look at you. I will look at you. Hey, ah, mina kuangalia. Time is running out. Mina kuangalia tu. Because of school fees. Lord, I'm looking at you. You wake up in the morning, you are sick. Lord, I'm looking at you. You are the author and the perfecter of my faith. You perfect it. You wrote it down. You wrote the bad parts of my story. You wrote the trial of my story. You wrote the stress of my story. And guess what? You wrote the good part of my story. All that is found in you. I'm not looking elsewhere. Hallelujah. Because God, you know my life. You didn't make a promise to a person you never knew. You made a promise to a person you know. When everything else fades away, my dear friends, the only thing you have is a promise from God. And that is what we hold on to. That is what I hold on to. When life doesn't make sense, I hold on to the promise. Lord, you promised me. And I'm looking at you. And there are times it comes, my dear friends, you do not look at anything else. You look at Jesus. Nirudi, there are some things that happen in your life. You, if you look anywhere else, you will burn your house. There are things you go through, Kiangalia, you might. 
utakula makaratasi hapa kwa barabara hapa there are things that you i just look at you i just look at you i want to look elsewhere and at times you go through hell and high water but because your eyes are locked on jesus you don't know how you've survived i was talking to my mom a few days ago she was telling me you know victor many people don't know this but the first time i began falling sick was in 2009 in 2009 and 2009 is when the symptoms became tangible but 1988 is when i knew something was wrong nikamulta and what happened in 09 akaniambia so you saying that mom you've been unwell all is on nine zika manifest vizuri so from on nine to now you've been akaniambia ndio i told her then how did you do it akaniambia me i looked at jesus I didn't look at the disease I looked at Jesus. And every day I know he's doing something in my life I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. So I told her but you can tell me what's happening she's she's now she's now she's, now, she's, now, she's back at home she went home. I said but what's happening are you okay? Said, I'm fine. She said I'm fine. My mouth is terrible I can't eat. I have sores in my mouth I can't eat anything. But God is doing something in my life. I know God is doing something in my life. I backed off. I said hallelujah. He's doing something in your life. I believe he's doing something in your life. May he keep on doing that thing in your life. Kanambia, mi naangalia anga Yesu. Nikiangalia mwili yangu, nitakufa moyo. Naangalia Yesu. Sasa zingine, usiangalie mfuko yako. Haleluya. Angalia Yesu. Nimeongelesha wale wa finances. God is good. At times, don't look at your wallet. Look at Jesus. At times, don't look at your safety. Look at Christ. Abraham does not look at his dying body. Abraham looks at the one who promised him. No no difference. Abraham doesn't look at his dying body. He looks at the one who promised him. The truth of the matter is God faithful. Do you believe he's faithful? Then see whatever his promise will take place. What is the worry? See it will take place. Itafanyika. Your work is to stay alive. That's why we like saying in this class I shall not die but live to declare the goodness of the goodness of them it says look not to the offer the future of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and he sat down at the right hand of the father amen verse 3 for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself lest you be wearied and faint in your minds He's saying remember jesus in case you lose hope whenever you want to lose hope remember what christ did on the cross we began the fellowship of the cross amen if whenever you want to give up remember the cross let's go back there want to you something interesting give me passion i hope it's the one i want good his example is because his heart was focused upon the joy knowing that you would be his he endured the agony of the cross and conquered its humiliation and now sits exalted at the right hand of the father we now look from a natural dream and we fast and gaze onto jesus who bathed face within us and leads us forward into faith's perfection god is good god is good Give me a new living translation. I'm bringing it home. Three versions are enough. We can do 10. NLT. Oh, there. Good. God is good. It says, eh? We keep our eyes on Jesus whom our faith depends on from start to finish. He was willing to die a shameful death on the cross because of the joy he knew. Would be we would be his afterward. Now I sit in the place of the highest honor besides God's throne. God is good. Looking unto Jesus. This song by Boaz you like singing. Eh? Angalia Shuja. Eh? Another version says, Look at our hero. Amen. Look at our hero. Actually, that song comes from here. How could the realm salaba? He did not despise the cross. That song is born from this scripture. Hebrews 12. Amen. 
that we are looking to him, the author and the finisher of our faith. But I'm telling the devil, listen, you are trying my life, but I'm looking to Jesus. You are trying me, but I'm looking at Christ. You are trying my marriage, I'm looking at Christ. You are trying me, I'm looking at Christ. Because what he did there was enough to bring my life to where it should be. God is good. God is good. All the time, I thought that you are a testimony. What happened? God is good. I want us to pray. And today we are basically thanking Jesus for what he has done in our lives. Amen? Because he knows your story, he knows your life, he knows your beginning, he knows your end. I want us to lift him up and to exalt him and to praise him for what he has done in our lives. Amen? There is nothing about your life he doesn't know. Enthrone him. Let your life unfold. The Bible says, God says, I do that which I will to do. I believe God is willing to bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. God is great. I want us just to thank the Lord for Jesus. Let us thank the Father for Jesus. He who spared not his son, how can he deny us all things? He spared not his son. Let us thank him for Jesus. Let us thank him for what he did on the cross. Let us thank him for the reconciliation. Let us thank him for the forgiveness. Let us thank him for the redemption. Let us thank him for the blood. Let us thank him that we have a way out. Thank him we are co heirs. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the author and the perfecter of our faith. It is through him that everything was made perfect for you. Bible says in Colossians that you who can disqualify you, yet Jesus died for you. No one can disqualify you. Christ died for you. So I just thank him. The thanksgiving we're doing to thank God for Jesus is because we want to invoke the finished works on the cross. We want to invoke what happened in Calvary to manifest in our lives. Because part of perfection and part of God's plan for your life was Jesus to go on the cross to remove any legal right that the devil has over your life. The plan of God was to eliminate the legal right. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. The Bible says, for this reason the Son of God was made manifest. I am the reason that he was made manifest. So we are just thanking Jesus for what he did on the cross. We are thanking him for what he did. His investment in our lives. His investment in our future. That's what we are thanking him for. Just take time and thank him. Just thank him. The Bible says when you lift Jesus up, the Lord draws all things to himself. Just thank him for the cross. Just thank the Father for Jesus. Just thank him for Jesus. Just thank him for Jesus. Thank him for Jesus. Because the only response the Father knows is responding to Jesus. Come on, just thank him for Jesus. It is Jesus who did it. Not you. Abraham did not become the founder of nations by his own self. Jesus made Abraham the founder of all nations. Abraham did not succeed in Canaan because of anyone else. Jesus made him to succeed. Because God is the author and the finisher of our faith. He planned the life of, of Abraham from the beginning to the very end. If God can plan the life of Abraham, how much more of your life has God worked out? How much more of your life has God planned out? He said it is finished. Oh, Rabba Sandarama, Rukurubos in the day. Raka da Babu Sandarari Riva. Rakanamaraba Sandarivara. Just thank him. I want you just to thank him with the understanding of what the cross has done. Without the cross, we are nothing. Without the cross, we are nothing. Without the cross, you can't do anything. The cross gives you the power to pray, the cross gives the power to call on Jesus. It is by the cross that you are surviving. It's by the cross that you are living. It's by the cross that you are overcoming. The job you have is because of the cross. The family you are born to 
is because of the cross. The education you have is because of the cross. The business you have is because of the cross. We are not taking anything for granted. We are not saying that we qualify because of anything we have done. We are products of the mercy of God. We are products of the mercy of God. After the Bible says that it came as a gift from God that no man should boast. We cannot boast on anything. We cannot boast and say we have got good families. We didn't do anything to have good families. We can't boast and say we got good marriages. We did nothing to get a good marriage. You can't say that I worked hard to get the job that I have. You didn't work hard. There are those who work harder than you. It is the cross that was a leveling field. Oh, if you understand what happened in Calvary, you will thank the Lord for the cross. If you know what happened in Calvary, you will understand. If you know what happened in Calvary, you will thank the Lord for the cross. Lord, I thank you for the cross. I know what the cross has done for me. And I want to thank you for the cross. This cross made me qualified. This cross made me to the person I am. This cross fought for me when I didn't know I needed anyone to fight for me. This cross was negotiating for me when I didn't know I needed anyone to negotiate for me. This cross was making pathways. This cross was giving me favor where I never knew I needed favor. This cross was forgiving me when I never knew I needed forgiveness. This cross, if I know what I have done, if I remember where I have done, the man I was, the person I was, and I remember that the cross was already negotiating for me, I will praise you, Father, for the cross. I will praise you for the cross. If I look at where I have come from, the family I was born from, the journey I have taken to where I am, Lord, it's not because I know how to pray, but it's because the cross was speaking on my behalf. The cross spoke on my behalf when the devil was planning to kill me, when he thought he had a legal right. I never knew about spiritual warfare. I never knew about deliverance. I never knew about authority and power, but somehow the cross was negotiating for me and fighting for me in the dens of darkness the cross was there for me in my days of ignorance the cross was there for me when I was ignorant I was lost and confused the cross was speaking for me I know what the cross has done for me I understand what the cross has done for me you are the author I'm the finisher of my faith. You knew, Lord, I will need the cross. You knew my family would need the cross. You knew my calling would need the cross. You knew my health would need the cross. You knew my finances would need the cross. You knew I need the cross, Almighty God. As the author and the finisher of my faith, you took the cross upon yourself and said that, Lord, I deserve to be saved. I never knew I deserved to be saved. I never qualified for saving, but Lord, by the cross, I qualify for saving. How the cross speaks for me. Oh, Rada Shakanama, Roko Dubari Namari Rebu Sakere, Rana Raba Sandere, Roko Dabari Arara, Rashandere, Navara Kanara, Uriba Sandere Raba, Oh, Rababa Sandara Rara Rabo Sakaraba, Oh, Rama Maria Rara. The devil thought he had legal right in my life. The devil thought he had legal right. But the cross was standing, and the cross said, Ah, he doesn't have legal right. This cross, Lord, oh, it is not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, and the same spirit that rose us from the dead. Oh, it is because of the cross and we are thanking you for the cross the cross has spoken in my life I'm thanking you for the cross I'm lifting the power of the cross in my life I'm declaring the power of the cross in my life oh oh 
Oh Lord, the cross speaks for me, Lord. Hallelujah. The cross speaks for my life. Oh Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, I thank you for the cross. Come on, thank him for the cross. 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 Oh, Oh, Lord, thank you for the cross. Come on, thank him for the cross. Thank him for the cross. 